what is life? This is a profound question for biologists. What exactly are we studying? But defining life is not only interesting for a small set of scientists. It also helps all of us to understand ourselves better and appreciate other forms of life. And understanding how life on this planet works can help us to grasp how life on other planets could look like. So, what is life? The truth is, it is very difficult to give a short definition of life. What we can do, however, is to look at different features of living organisms in order to explain life. In the 17th century, advancements in microscopy enabled Robert Hooke and Anton van Leeuwenhoek to discover the fundamental unit of life. They were the first scientists to describe cells. Today, we know that all organisms consist of cells. From the smallest microorganism to the tallest tree, we can find cells everywhere. And although cells can look very different from each other, they all have membranes which contain a variety of different molecules. I want to emphasize that cells have membranes, as this will become very important in a minute. The fact that all forms of life contain cells help us to understand how life is able to solve a paradox which has been formulated by Erwin Schrödinger. Erwin Schrödinger was a famous Austrian physicist in the 20th century. He wondered how something as ordered and remarkable as organisms can exist in a universe where everything becomes more chaotic over time. In other words, he observed that organisms seem to defy the second law of thermodynamics. But what precisely does that law state? Imagine we have a hot cup of coffee. When we put the cup in front of us, we will soon realize that the coffee becomes colder over time. Heat escapes the coffee until it has reached room temperature. The second law of thermodynamics states that we can never expect a cold cup of coffee to get energy back and become warmer than room temperature. Life, however, is able to remain warm and structure, so how is it possible? The reason why living organisms seem to overcome this law is that their cells have membranes and complex biochemistry. Every time we eat, our cells take up important nutrients. Numerous biochemical reactions in our cells then convert nutrients into energy, which is then used to fuel the cells. This ability of cells, the ability to maintain themselves by converting nutrients into energy, separates us from non-living things. The next important characteristic of living things have also been discovered during the 20th century. And it answers a very funny question. If cells are that complex, where are the blueprints to build a cell? Well, the answer lies directly inside cells. They contain long molecules called DNA. DNA, or also sometimes RNA, depending on the organism, is the storage device of life. The structure of DNA was discovered by Watson, Crick and Franklin, although we now consider this chapter of science to be highly controversial. But nonetheless, within DNA we find all genes which are needed to make the major components of a cell, named RNA and proteins. And the most remarkable property of DNA is that it is a very stable molecule and it can remain perfectly intact for years and years. What is often not discussed at this point is a principle which has been formulated by the scientist C.H. Weddington. Genes need to regulate themselves and need to be regulated. Think of this the following way. In the human body we find billions of cells which contain the same DNA. However, we can observe that these cells can be very different from each other. A neuron does not look or behave like a muscle cell. The reason why cells with the same DNA can be so diverse is that the DNA can be regulated in a variety of different ways. That means that neurons and muscle cells have the same DNA, but different sets of active or inactive genes. And we are just starting to understand how these networks work. Now that we have understood the tiny aspects of life, we can take a look at the whole organism. 
What all forms of life have in common is that they respond to their environment. In autumn, birds sense a drop in temperature and move to warmer regions. Dogs can take up an interesting scent and look for its origin. Many higher animals have brains to perceive their surroundings and take actions. Even smaller organisms can respond to their environment without the need of a brain. Bacteria, for example, can sense sugar and move directly towards the source. On a broader scale, organisms can also change due to interactions with their environment. Plants, for example, grow if they feel sunlight coming from a particular direction. Newborn babies have a very bad eyesight, which becomes better and better due to structural changes in the brain as they observe their surroundings. We've already discussed that many cells store the information as DNA. The simple beauty of nature now is that life has found ways to not only maintain DNA in one organism, but also to pass down DNA copies to offsprings. We obtained our DNA from our parents, who got it from their parents, who got it from their parents, and so on. And this leads us back to the first organisms over 3 billion years ago. Isn't this beautiful? This form of information transfer has been so successful that every living organism does it today and has done it for billions of years. But of course nothing in biology is perfect and genetic information can acquire changes. And this finally brings us to our last characteristic of life which has been defined by Charles Darwin. Evolution. For various means, the DNA sequence of a cell can become slightly different. If these changes occur in specific cell types, and in our case this would be sperm or egg cells, then the changes are heritable. And since such changes can happen all the time, we will always find genetic diversity in populations. Due to external forces, a process called natural selection can then occur which favors the reproduction of individuals with certain genetic changes. And over long periods of time, natural selection can lead to remarkable changes in organisms and even lead to new species. Things, for example, can have very different beaks depending on the food which was available for their ancestors. The fact that you can understand me right now is also due to evolution. Compared to other primates, humans have developed sophisticated languages and they became especially useful for our ancestors when they decided to hunt together and form tribes. So that's life in a nutshell, right? Well, now that we've defined important characteristics of life, we will see that not all organisms obey these laws. A mule, for example, which is the hybrid of a horse and a donkey, is alive but cannot produce offsprings, meaning that it cannot pass its DNA to future generations. Viruses, on the other hand, are often not considered to be alive but show some characteristics of life. Viruses have genetic information based on DNA or RNA. They undergo evolution over time, which is the reason why we have flu season each year but they cannot maintain themselves and need a host. This is the reason why they are often not considered as being alive, but Nobel Prize winner Paul Nurse points out that many forms of life depend on other organisms. For example, Plasmodium, which is the main cause of malaria, is considered to be alive. However, this parasite cannot survive without its host cell. In other words, without a host they would not have all the biochemical reactions which are necessary to survive. You see, the more we take a look at our surroundings, we can find more and more exceptions to the characteristics of life. But the things we've discussed also help us to speculate how life on other planets could look like. We know that extraterrestrial life would have to have some forms of cells to defy the increasing chaos of the universe. They will also have to have some form of information storage similar to DNA or RNA, which needs to be regulated. They will most likely grow and perceive and respond to the environment in some form. They will also reproduce and pass down their genetic information to future generations. And lastly, they will have the tendency to undergo evolution. 
So in the end, we know some properties of life, but what actually is life? That is hard to define within one sentence, except life is extraordinary.